gosh, I love it when the memory card works on the first time, T. Amazing. Amazing. And amazing having you here in the studio with real mics. I know. They're so fancy. Yeah. So this is, let's see, you're, have all three, you've been on, I think, three times now? I think this is my third time, yeah. Okay. Because you and Sarah, you and Sarah were on together. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's right. And I did one by myself before that. Yeah. Like think, before we even started playing together, I think. Okay. And I think that was just, that was just me and you too. Yeah. Yeah. I've never done it with Try. <laughs> <laughs> so to the, I was like, maybe he'll be back in time. Like maybe this will be the first one with both of you here. Yeah. But yeah. It, it gets harder. This year has probably been a record uh, for his absences. Yeah. Because he, I mean, him and Kamer, they just played like their 14th tournament That's so many. Overseas. The schedule's been wild too. Yeah. With all the different, like, there's just so many. Yeah. It's been a lot. Yeah. Um. But he, so he gets back in like two hours. And nice. then, I, then I always feel bad because I'm like, this is like, it's a 50-50 show. Yeah. Like, I want to do as many as I can with you, but I also like want to let you get home and hang out with yeah. your wife. Not make you come right into the studio right away. <laughs> right. Like, you just got off a plane for however yeah. many hours. Exactly. And, like, so, talk to people. <laughs> and that dude, like, he went to Asia, back, Asia, back, and Asia, back again. Oh, because they played China too, didn't they? Yeah. They played, oh, they, and they played India? China? Yeah. That's India and then Thailand. And he came yeah. back for all of them. Was it was like, just so awkwardly spaced out. Yeah. There was no good way to do it. Yeah. Unless, Unless you, you stayed stay over there. there. But I don't think anyone really wanted to stay there for six weeks. No. And it's, like, I think it's well, one thing if you're like 22 yeah. and single and you're just like, oh, like let's go yeah. see the world. Like That's awesome. That's a really fun lifestyle. But if when you got yeah. you know, like a three-year-old or yeah. I think Naya, she might be four now, like, then you got to come like, back. Yeah. Like, I miss my family. <laughs> you don't want to be on the road yeah. anymore. And like, it'd be one thing if it was Europe, you know? But yeah. Asia is just like the time change is hard and the food's different. So yeah, yeah, that's hard. Yeah, but you're you're going to the Philippines soon. We are. That's fun. Yeah. Have you ever been? No. So I'm excited. I have like a map my mom got me that you can put push pins in. Yeah. Of all the places you've been, and like there have been a couple of repeats this year, mm -hmm. but I've never been to Philippines, so I'm excited to put a new pin in the map. That's always super fun. Yeah. We have one uh, like a color one, oh. which is kind of cheating. Because I've been to China once, but I got to color all yeah, of China, and I've so been to Canada good. twice, got to cover yeah. all of Canada, and yeah. I hit all of Russia with just uh, wherever we were, Sochi, mm -hmm. and I was like, like, I feel like I'm kind of cheating. Yeah, yeah countries. <laughs> like the push pins are a little bit more covered. accurate. Yeah, yeah. so I'm excited to go. I hear good things. My roommate's been, and she says it's a really cool spot. So Yeah, and you're still like on the beach, right? Are you still on the same spot? I don't spot? know. I think... So I was looking at it, and it looks like there's a big, like, bay, kind of. Okay. But I don't know if we're actually playing on that or if we're okay. playing at a facility somewhere. It should be pretty cool, though. I think a lot of people, the entry list for the guys is stacked. I think people are like, that's yeah. a good tournament and a good also place to vacation. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> if we go and don't do well, you know. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. Yeah. I think the girls, there's a good number of girls teams playing. Yeah. So it should be a good tournament for who sure. All, who else from the U.S.? I haven't looked at I'm still, like, um, catching up. Yes. I didn't really look at that either. Uh, I think Corinne and Sarah are I'm sure Corinne and Sarah are going. Yeah. They get their miles in. Yeah. <laughs> it's impressive. But they do, like, a really good job of not only traveling and playing, but from what I can tell on Instagram and, like, following them on social media and stuff, they explore they and They enjoy and, like, it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really cool. Um, but I think they're signed up for that. I think Kim and Tegan, maybe. Okay. They've been oh. playing super well. Yeah. Had a good tournament in what, Thailand, right? Yeah. They did pretty well. Um, Tony and Haley, because they played in Thailand and they're just staying over there. Okay. Um, there might be some other women's teams, but I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Got it. It's, it's been weird because like, the top half of the U.S. is so good that they don't really need to bother playing in challenges. Yeah. And then the challenges are, low, it's like little AVP yeah. tournaments. Right. It's kind of fun. Yeah. No, I'm excited to play and... It, like just having another opportunity to play this year will be fun. Yeah, so. and you've played a lot, but you never see. I've never seen you burned out. No, like, ever. Like, like you're always. You're like the happiest wood, person you know? I know. Like, I, <laughs> it's been it's been a fun year, like a lot of ups and downs. But like, there's a time here and there where this is so silly, but I'm like, it doesn't really feel like Christmas yet because we're like still in full right. training mode. Um, but I'm excited and it'll be cool to play another one with Meg, another two with Meg. And like, yeah. we just weren't sure um, how many she could play because she's in school right? and she wasn't really planning on playing much at all this year, I don't think. So the fact that we can squeeze in two more tournaments is pretty fun. Yeah. It's really cool that Dane is cool with it, Yeah, which I've always thought 
that every college coach, like, you should. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's what good. You, it looks good for what, the program, right? Yeah, what, it's, it looks good for the program. But, and, like, what better training could you yeah. possibly get? As good as USC is, like, they're not as good as a challenge-level Olympic qualifier. Yeah. It's like, Meg's going to get awesome reps. <laughs> if So, with me, she's playing defense, and I don't think she knows what she's going to do at school yet. Okay. She's going to block her. Well, she picked it up but, awfully fast. Yeah. Because when you guys started playing together, I was like, you know, they're two good volleyball players. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't know how it's going to work. And then Meg was like... Yeah. Fifth in digs per me- per so set fun. at World Champs. Like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, which I wasn't surprised. And she said she's played some defense. Like I think she used to split block maybe or do some other stuff. Like she yeah. has played some defense before. But at that level, I think yeah, I was just like, you could never, you would never tell that you weren't a true defender. You know? Right. So it was really fun, and her mindset was so good. I think I would be so nervous going into a tournament and just playing something like totally new position because. Mm-hmm. She was playing on the left forever, too. And so with me, she's playing on the right. Okay. So she's playing on the right, and she's playing defense. So you're switching sides of the court and doing a new position. And she was just like, yeah, like, here we go. I mean, yeah. just so positive about it. And very much like our mindset was very much, we're just going to serve tough inside out. Yeah. And if we, like, she'll get a dig, I'll get a block, and we'll get an ace. And right. then hopefully we win some matches. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. So that was cool. It's it's She's like one of the most easygoing steady oh yeah sweat, like 19 yeah. is she 20 she's 21 she 21 just okay 21. 21 we were in but paris the, when like, she turned 21 okay yeah but she should be like 27 the way she acts oh i it was her birthday and i was like how old are you 24 25 <laughs> she was like 21 and i was like oh my gosh okay <laughs> i knew you were young but yeah yeah but like you'd never know it like yeah. you said you thought she was 24 or 25 yeah and, when, and that's only because she's still in school like i yeah assume we're the same age yeah but even now i mean like stuff, you look you know? at like college football rosters and you're like that's a 26 year old quarterback yeah, yeah. <laughs> Co- covid and transferring has made things so different yeah the i think this is what the last covid year so I, hopefully i things think will start so to go back to normal and then yeah it'll start to i think get back to normal so confusing to me though i can't, yeah. can't like, like uh my sister-in-law kelsey just had her third career senior night <laughs> That's so impressive. <laughs> yeah. I wonder which one was the best. And All at the same well, school. She was so funny. No, no, no. So she did her first, her undergrad senior night was at St. Mary's. Oh, right. Okay, and then yeah, yeah. she did a grad year at BYU. Mm-hmm. But BYU, they don't let you um, play sports and do a master's program at the same time. Really? Because I think oh. they said their master's program is like so intensive. And Kelsey yeah. was like, you I've never gotten a B in my life. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> I can handle. I'm going to be fine. But uh, so she didn't. It was like like a skipped year of school. She took classes, yeah. but it didn't really count Towards anything. for anything. So she had that senior night. Yeah. And then she is getting her MBA at Northridge. Good for and her. And so then she did her last year of eligibility at Northridge. And then so I think it was uh, Saturday was her That's third awesome. and final career yeah. senior night. Oh, I love that. <laughs> she worked the system well. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> you get like three jerseys to hang on the wall. Yeah, and, like, it's yeah. so funny because like cool. she got the jersey and everything. She's like, I've never even like worn this yeah. jersey. They just, <laughs> right? they just like print it out for this thing. Like cool, thanks. Yeah, it was funny though because <laughs> right after they lost and she was like, I'm 0 for 3 on senior nights. No, I have to be the really? only person. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that is not what you want. Yeah. Oh, man. But she was she was content. I think that, like, she's good. She's yeah. at peace with her collegiate she career. She's like, I've done three. <laughs> I'm good now. <laughs> yeah. Now she's good being Austin's favorite aunt. Yeah. Yeah, cause she just she pops down like every Sunday, and oh, it's like, oh, that's cute. And it's it's cool because like Austin can only recognize probably like four or five people, mm-hmm. which is impressive that he can do that. Already, yeah, it's just right? me, Delaney, I think Delaney's mom and dad, okay, and Kelsey. Love that. But like Kelsey comes in the room and he just lights up and they oh, just hang out all day. That's so cool. Yeah, that's it's, cool that she's nearby and yeah, like, awesome for him that he gets to grow up with family nearby too. yeah it's super helpful too because my family can't i mean they're yeah. in maryland so they're not, yeah. <laughs> they're, right. not they're not able to do a yeah. whole lot they come in like once or twice a Every year now and then yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's awesome oh my gosh i wish like my i live far away from my sisters now yeah and my sister got married this year and so i'm like if and when you start having kids like you want to come to la for a while yeah. or like should i come to you <laughs> like i can't be this far away are they so, all still upstate new york um my twin sister and her husband are in nashville now because he is That's right. his uh, residency at Vanderbilt. Okay. So I'm like, maybe I'll just come to Nashville. Nashville, and, like, sweet. Visit for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I just, it was really funny. I just went to a bachelor party there. Oh, and, I bet that was fun. And I was talking to Steve Obradovich, 
just helping him promote the forest thing. He's like, you're doing a bachelor party in Nashville? He's like, you know that's like the bachelorette yeah. like capital of the yeah. USA. I was like, maybe that's the idea. I don't know. Both? I don't know. She <laughs> says that outside, I think uh, where she works, where her building is, is like somewhat close to downtown. I don't know. I've never been. Okay. But she says on the weekends in the summer, she just, it was like Friday through Sunday, just bachelorette parties. Yeah. Multiple every single weekend. Okay. Everywhere. I mean, when we went, we probably ran into like four or five of them. Yeah. But it's it's crazy though, because every bar you go to, they're they're like tall. Yeah. They're with like four floors. or five stories. Yeah, with Someone different floors, and that. there's a different band on every floor, and you can't. I don't know how they do the acoustics, but you can't hear anything. That's cool. From the other floor. Yeah, I would love to go visit. You I would love, love it because you love country music. music, and I love yeah. country music. So yeah. Yeah. So you would that that's a good spot for you to visit. Yeah, well, we <laughs> might I might go visit her for New Year's, so I think that'll be fun. We'll see what yeah. happens. You've uh you've got some travel coming up. Yeah. So we were going over this before we recorded. So you're going, mm -hmm. you leave for Philippines? Monday. A week Monday. from today. Okay. And then we're there for a week and then we come back. And I'm actually in the process of moving right now. So like everything has to be packed. We're going to move. I'm going to kind of unpack enough just to repack to go to the Dominican <laughs> for the North Seca. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I think I'm going to go from there to Florida to visit my boyfriend's family because they're there and then to rochester for christmas and then yeah. to nashville for new year's and, and then back here those are some diverse places like yeah. you're packing for the dominican mm -hmm. to rochester yeah, yeah. so i'm like <laughs> oh, and then also maybe winter. nashville i kind of want to bring my cowboy boots so yeah. I'm like i don't know how i'm gonna do this but yeah so you like hot summer cold winter Schmedium yeah, with Nashville. In between. <laughs> You're packing fall your whole weather. wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. Like, I should just ship clothes home instead of like, carry them from place to place. But yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for it. I think it'll be fun. Yeah. We well, were always just taking life with a smile. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm curious how, uh, how did you and Meg even end up getting together? That's a really good question. Because that's not a team I don't really that know. it's like, oh, Teresa's a free agent. Megan Craft. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's just not, I wouldn't have put that together, but it's worked. You guys have played awesome. It's, it was, it's been really fun. Um, we, so she was working with Scott. We, Sarah and I were working with Scott and mm -hmm. she and Emily were working with Scott. And then the way it kind of worked was Emily retired, Sarah decided to take a break. And then Scott also took a different job. So both of us were kind of like, <laughs> right. we don't have teams anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so the timing of everything that happened was kind of crazy. Like, I don't think... She, I don't exactly know the timeline for like how things worked with her, but I think yeah. part of her was maybe not going to go back to school in the fall. But then okay. since Emily was retiring, which the, I haven't like exactly talked to her about that, but I think she decided to go back to school. And then I was like, Ooh, I still want to play in these events. Like yeah. we've, we've qualified for world champs. Like can't not play that. Um, and I was still talking to Scott cause he, I've worked with him for a long time. And so he was able to like provide mentorship and guidance, even if he yeah, wasn't really, that's cool. you know, coaching me anymore. Um, and he was like, dude, I'm telling you, Meg can play defense. Like she can do it. You guys just go like, it'll be fun. The way he was the one who was kind of like the way that she looks at the game is very similar to how you see it. And so you'll be able to have good conversations and like talk strategy, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, in a way that I wasn't used to. So I was like, I mean, okay. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. kind of a funky situation where I was trying to decide like what I wanted out of the rest of the year. And I was like, I just want to go and compete and like have fun doing it because at this point that's kind of the Olympics were out of the question at that point. And right. like, it was just might as well go and like play because you like playing. Yeah. And imagine that. Yeah. I know, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but it was so, so refreshing after the first week of practice with Meg, I was like giddy coming home and I'd like call my parents or like call my boyfriend and be like, Oh my God, like practice was so fun. Like, yeah. ah, like it just like couldn't believe it. And I think, I think she actually texted me and was like, Hey, because there, there were like a handful of different people who had reached out and were like, not really sure what you're doing for the rest of the year, hearing some things through the rumor mill. Like, yeah. Um, and I think she was like, just so you know, I haven't played a ton of defense and I'm still in school, but if you ever want to get on the court, let me know. Yeah. And we practiced a couple times and then it was she, it was so fun. So worked out. Yeah, worked out pretty well. That's uh, it's such an interesting, like the mid season breakup is such a yeah. such a weird thing because a lot of people 
have been partnered up, but then people are like, I'm not really feeling this partnership anymore. Yeah. So you, as a, a very good, like top tier blocker, I mean, you're probably getting a lot of messages. There, there were a handful. And at the time I was so overwhelmed with everything that was going on and like the whole vision for the next two years had shifted that yeah. I was just like, I don't know if I necessarily handled it very well. Like I probably could have talked to some more people like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was just like, Oh my God, what is happening? You know? And, yeah. Um, yeah. So I got, got like a handful of messages, which was kind of nice, but yeah. Yeah. It's always good so, to be wanted. Yeah. I was like, Oh, well, <laughs> like at least this isn't, you know, at least like I'm not going to never play in a tournament again. Like there right. are options. Yeah. So. And it is hard. Cause like you said, I mean, you had a two year plan Yeah. and then it seemed to catch everyone off guard, especially cause like Sarah went like pretty dark mode mm -hmm. and then she's like i'm gonna play indoor mm -hmm. like why well, didn't that wasn't on my bingo card yeah <laughs> you know? yeah it was tough because it was just like you yeah it's like a two two year plan you know yeah. and i know that we were pretty behind in the olympic race not like super behind but we were only in it was august of um, we had almost a full year of tournaments left to play yeah. and so in my mind i was just like this anything can happen in sports like mm -hmm. gotta keep trying like we could go post like we had a good finish in a strava and i was like if we just play like that every time which like you know it's hard to do right but like in theory it could happen so yeah. it was just that is kind of where my mind was and then having to like reevaluate that like okay it's it's out of your hands there's there's nothing you can do yeah you know you've been every decision i've made for the past six years has been around like trying to make a run for this olympics mm -hmm. and then just having that like taken away was kind of tough yeah even though like you know we were behind in points and stuff it's so, so it's crazy because like, like yeah you were behind but at the time you were number seven in the world i know and, and that's so, just like, the craziness of being an american and i just like really thought that like we we could like we've beaten both of the top two teams you yeah. know and maybe not consistently but if there we could iron out a few things like who's to say that we couldn't start beating them consistently and make it you know right something like that so i was like it's sports anything can happen i'm not giving up on this yet yeah but especially with world champs to go because world champs is just like the points there are i mean so it's inflated. monopoly money yeah, yeah. and then yeah. Yeah, it was kind of a bummer, but you still had to go to World Champs. Which was so fun. Which was awesome. Yeah. I was bummed that I couldn't see. You guys were I know. <laughs> marooned off in Apizaco. Yeah, I know. Or no, we were in... <laughs> You're in Humatla? Yeah. Okay. So we were even farther. And we, by the time we um, got the pool, or after pool play, before playoffs, we were like, oh, maybe we'll get to go somewhere else and yeah. see some other people. And then we just didn't. The way that the, it drew, yeah. we just stayed there. And we were kind of like, well, at least we are used to the venue, you know, for right. playoffs. But... And that was, was Humala the highest yes. of the altitude? I think it was. You were above 8,000. Yeah, right? we were above 8,000. It was Shoo. feet higher. Yeah. That's hard. Because mm -hmm. I remember playing in the challenge in Tlaxcala last March. Yeah. And I got, it was me and Timmy. Yes. And this Danish team served me like every ball through the first technical timeout. And I was like, we were up like 15 6. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't handle this. <laughs> <laughs> like please option it something yeah. but i think when we went there last march i didn't realize it was at elevation okay so this time before we went like we did a couple weeks of altitude acclimation right okay. so at least in the moment we couldn't breathe but the recovery process was a little easier okay but last March when we were there, I was huffing and puffing. I got yeah. served every single ball. And I was just like, am I this out of shape? Yeah. I was like, what is going I'll on? I'll do to humble you. Yeah. Big time. Big time. And Meg and I, our whole thing is we wanted to serve really tough. Yeah. And we couldn't do that. Like right. By the end of the week, we kind of started to figure out how to make the ball move. Yeah. But the first couple matches, we were just float surf right at them. They were just passing them so easy. Everyone was in system. And we yeah. were like, oh, God. The people that I was talking to, at least in Tlaxcala, they said that jump serves were almost impossible to keep in, mm -hmm. but that they said that the float serves moved just as much, if not more. And I, we just couldn't get it. Maybe we just couldn't. It was just us. That we couldn't figure <laughs> out how to make it work the first couple of days, but we were like, oh, this is tough. Well, you played super well, regardless that you lost one of your weapons. I mean, yeah. you won pool, in the, which I didn't know was possible. I didn't think it was possible either. And I think I texted you afterwards. Yeah. And I was like, I... I I look. I was looking at the points because I don't know how the forfeit was scored. With and I asked, Danielle and Tanya. I asked Sean about that. Sean Scott, 
right after the match because he was yeah. great. He came to all our matches. We didn't have a coach there, so he was helping us warm up and like <clears throat> team leader there. And we were like, "What's the deal?" So we're did we finish second or did we finish third? Yeah, and. He was like, no, I think you won. And we were like, wait, wait, wait. (laughs) Please explain. But it sounds like because the Spanish team forfeited, they got minus. So like their point differential was terrible because they, all those points counted against them. So they got like a minus 42. It's like a 20 or nothing. Or they scored to like eight points or whatever before they ended up, or 11 or something before they forfeited. But China, it wouldn't be fair for China to get plus 42 so i think they just got plus four for winning or something oh so it didn't work in their favor but right. it worked in our favor it did it's, from what i understand that's how they did the forfeit okay because i was curious because when that happened i was i thought you were in a battle for second and third me too and that's then... i that's absolutely what i thought and i was like we do not want to play that lucky loser game no so yeah because then I saw the standings. I was like, is this right? It was hilarious because that whole night I was sitting there watching the matches with Stefan Bormans. Mm-hmm. And we were – because I think that same night uh, was when Chase and Miles had that crazy yeah. match against Ukraine. And then Trevor and Theo then had a win. And you win pool and you lose and you're out of the world championships against George Andre. Yeah. <laughs> he won a bronze medal <laughs> last year. The video of them when – I think Paul told them that. Right after they won. Yeah. It's hilarious. It's one of my favorite videos ever. I don't, both of their faces. I don't think I've like, seen it. I need to find it. Someone posted on Instagram. I think Megan showed me it. And I was okay. like, oh my. They were both just like, <laughs> didn't realize what was happening. Yeah. I texted Trevor. I was like, you have no idea how big that win was. Yeah. He's like, sure didn't. Yep. Now I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, great. Maybe it was good. I didn't know, you know. And I was, that's, I'm actually kind of curious what you think. Because I was talking with Lottie after. And he was saying that. A couple guys were trying to send the message to Trev and Theo, like, you need to win. And oh, Lottie was like, No, yeah. we don't they don't yeah, need that extra pressure. Play. What would would you prefer to know or not know? I don't know. I actually was talking to the sports psych that was there with us yeah. on the road because my brain, like as soon as we lost that first match to Spain, we mm-hmm. played them first, my brain was like, Okay like calculating trying to calculate all the different scenarios <laughs> and then the forfeit happened the next night and i was like oh, well, there's no way like we're out and then i right. was like relax like it doesn't matter there's nothing you can do that stuff is out of your control like all you can do is yeah. play volleyball so i think it's almost better if i know because then i can stop thinking about it and mm-hmm. just focus on playing volleyball as opposed to maybe not knowing then thinking of all the what ifs yeah because that is distracting yeah so that's just something I got to Because it's, out. Uh, as as a commentator, we, we sort of have this catch-22 mm-hmm. where I think it's better to let the viewers know how many points this team needs to get in order to break pool. But yeah. then you're also providing a spoiler alert for what's happened before. Oh, okay. And a lot, of, a lot of fans will say, hey, like, I don't want to know these results. Can because you, they haven't watched yeah, earlier matches. Can you, like, refrain from letting me know? Which is totally understandable. But then mm-hmm. I think it makes the the viewing experience a lot more tense when you're like, they need to get to 2117 where they're out of pool. Right. It's just kind of tricky. I know. And I'm so instant gratification where I will go back and watch a game. Yeah. Whether already knowing who has won. Mm -hmm. So that stuff. I think it's an interesting way to watch a replay. Yeah. Especially because like, for example, I had missed the Taylor's match against Chase and Miles in Miami Mm -hmm. in that final. Yeah. And I looked at the scores and I was like, okay, it's a standard two set win. Yeah. But then at the tech of the second set, they're down 15 to six. And I was like, no. Yeah. Like, this, this, <laughs> this, this doesn't can't happen. Be true. <laughs> they even, must have messed up. <laughs> even the Taylors can't yeah. spot a lead that yeah. big. <laughs> yeah. I know. So I kind of like watching it that way. Yeah. It's, it, but... it's kind of fun to me. But I, I get why. So then when I do that, I'll just say, listen, I'm going to lay out the stakes of this. Mm-hmm. Here's a spoiler alert. Mute me for a minute. Yeah. Come back in a minute. I'll have yeah, to set yeah, a timer yeah. See, and be like, all right, perfect. minutes up. Okay, yeah. cool. If I you're like with that. me, awesome. If not, then watch a replay in peace. Yeah, good way to do it. Really good way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. when you uh, when you and Meg got together, what actually gave you like the final, like the piece to go with Meg? Because she's not a true defender. She's yeah. going back to school. Um, I think it was just – honestly was talking to Scott and he knew her really well. And like, we have 
the four of us, like Emily, Meg, Sarah, and I had yeah. traveled together before. And like we would practice together all the time mm-hmm. and just because we shared a coach. And I feel like we got along pretty well um before always like she was always super easygoing and really easy to talk to and then talking to scott he was just like look like you need something refreshing and someone that you can that is like like like-minded with you and how you see the game Mm -hmm. um and that was i think exciting to me to be able to like we'll be running some defensive plays and in a timeout I'll be like, Meg, I don't know, uh, help. Like, what, yeah. <laughs> what do you see and what can we do, you know? And she's just very like, okay, well, I see this. Like, we just, I felt like because we were a new team and which, I mean, I guess I didn't really know at the time, but like I trust Scott a lot and his opinion mm-hmm. means a lot. And so the fact that he was kind of like, you'll be able to have really good high-level conversations with her. And yeah. I mean, I've seen her play. She's so athletic and just makes she's just a look, good volleyball player she makes it look effortless too <clears throat> yeah so effortless and i'm just like man like you're i'm way older than you but you just make <laughs> this look so much easier than me you yeah. know so i think the those two things like playing against her and seeing her play a lot um and then kind of scott was like like you're gonna you're gonna be happy um playing with her was like i was like okay let's give it a try and it was pretty easy because it was just like we only had a couple months, a couple events mm-hmm. left of the season. So we were kind of like, however they go, like we didn't think we were going to play these events to begin with. So just the fact that we're here and can play them is exciting. And it's not always easy and fun to play when there's no pressure. Yeah. So, and then of course, like of all things to roll the dice, it's an elite 16 qualifier yeah. <laughs> in Paris world championships, mm-hmm. and then a loaded Norseka qualifier. Yeah. And then <laughs> see what happens after that. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was fun. Paris was really fun. Because I think I've qual- I don't think I have not qualified for an elite sixteen yet, and I know. I mean, obviously, that's impressive. Like, there is some. Well, I'm sure that's there's a some hard that thing I to do. I don't know. I mean, we had like last year, Sarah had really good points, so we got straight into some, and then yeah. the way it worked out, we qualified for one and did really well. So then those points held us over for the next right. bunch. Um, but I was dropping a huge finish. I was dropping our second place finish. Oh, in Ostrava. Or, yeah, when Meg and I were playing in Paris. And I was okay. like, okay. Like, <laughs> that's a that's a gamble. I, like, I, I respect you so much for doing that. Yeah, I was like, I guess it doesn't matter because we're going to world champs right after, which, yeah. like you said, the points are inflated. So, you know, worst comes to worst, we don't qualify. And then we'll be able to make up some points yeah. a week later. Um, but we, th- it was so weird. At Paris was crazy because we thought we knew the draw we thought we were gonna play ludwig in the match to get in Oof. and then the day of or the night before a team that we practiced against that day dropped out of the tournament and then a team that we saw practicing the day before also dropped out of the tournament so the whole draw changed that's so weird it was so they weird. were there and they dropped we practiced against them like Man. not that we were gonna play them but it was the polish girls okay i think hold on yeah and okay. then um the czech girls both we're both there and both withdrew from the tournament Whoa. The qualifier so that changed our draw um but then we were playing the clingers and like they've had a really good year yeah so we were They're just dangerous like, yeah yeah for sure so we were both i think i mean i was a little nervous going into that match but yeah. we got it done that. and then we played a, the french girls um lizana placet and or no, different one aileen yes aileen and uh clements yes yeah and they are fiery too. Yeah, so we I just... mean that's like the the qualifier level elite teams are like ceilings here and floors here. Yeah, and if you get yeah. them on this day, yeah, it's a problem. Right. <laughs> and like the Clingers, I mean they've won two futures this year, I think. Mm-hmm. And then I I always wonder this if how different world champs could have gone if Kelly and Sarah had I played know. them on center court. Yeah. Did, did you did you watch that match? Yes. So but they were playing on the, the side court. On the side the, court. Yeah. So there's no challenge system. Mm-hmm. And I think it was Dory. She hits one and like full hand contact off yeah. Kelly. Yes. And Kelly's like, no touch. Didn't touch it. And there, there were a couple right at the end yeah. of the first set that I was like, oh, I don't yeah. know if I was call or not. And, uh, but I, like Dory was like, you, there's no call, like no yeah. touch. And I mean, Kelly's not going to own up to no. it. It's world championships. No you can't. Would. I wouldn't. Yeah. You know? It was like seven, seven in the third. Yeah. And then the, the clingers just sort of melted down after that. And yeah. Kelly and Sarah like kind of pushed through it. But I mean, that was the third set. Like, you just took the world champion 
to three. To, right. And it was like, <laughs> wasn't it like 2220 or 24, 22, like almost, or 2119? Like they were. Yeah, yeah. Like right there. Yeah. And both of them. So, which is the cool, like, that's why we love sports, you know? Mm-hmm. It's and the Clingers cool. had kind of handled them in the pause mm-hmm. in the quarters. Yeah. That's a good team. Yeah. Yeah. So we were like, great. Okay. First round. Like, yeah. see how it goes. <laughs> Our first match, real match together. Um, but it was fun. And Meg played really, really well. Like, just so, so steady the whole time. Yeah. She was getting a lot of the serves um, and just handled it so well. And so I think we won. I mean, obviously, we qualified. So we won that and then won the next one. And who'd you play? I mean, your next one, China, maybe? No, it was the French. It was the French. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, And um, they were like, they had a big win. They won. They beat uh, the Swiss girls, Bobner. Esme and, and Zoe. Yeah. Who They've had a huge year. Yeah. So that was a big win for the French girls. So we were like, okay, they're they're feeling they're good. Hot. They're in yeah. France, Tell you know? Them. Yeah. So that was a good win for us. And then we were just happy we had a place to stay. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then, man, that main draw, I remember texting you after being yeah. like, that's like the most bittersweet main draw yeah. ever where you took Taliko and Maria Faye to three. Mm-hmm. Who else? I mean, all your matches we went played, three, right? Well, we lost in two to Kristen and Taryn. Okay. But it was like 21-19, 22-20. Yeah. I got aced up match point. I was like, oh my God. Roland Garros is funky though. Stop happening. I see more floats or vases in that venue than any other venue in the world. Last year. <laughs> last year. I wasn't going to bring it up. Do you remember? <laughs> Barbara and Carol. It was so, it was so <laughs> bad, Travis. I could not pass. And I was so nervous to go back and it play was, there. Yeah, I bet. What is it with that venue? Like, what happens I don't know. And I think I definitely did a better job this year than yeah. last year. It was after that tournament last year. I, like, happened... I wear glasses. And, like, the prescription yeah. is very light. And so I happened to be wearing them in the lobby. And Scott was like, you wear glasses? And I was like, well, it, like, they just sometimes help me see it light at night with the lights. Like, yeah. that sort of thing. Because I have stigmatism in both my eyes. And he was like are you kidding me he was like you just played at night under the lights like you don't you don't have contacts or anything and i was like you're right you're right you're right you're right so maybe that helps this year i don't know but yeah it's and it's kind of cold like the air is cold yeah it's outside but not outside yeah because commentating is always so funky because like i'm not on the court like i can't but people say just hits air pockets funny and yeah because like when it's windy you know why it would be hard or how it would be hard but when there's nothing it and just, it's indoor and it'll, it'll just, just like drop this way or yeah. rise that way and it's like it's funky for sure yeah. yeah i remember commentating that match against barbara and carol though oh. and i was like <laughs> they got great floats great floats it was like that's all you could say because yeah. it wasn't even like the ball was up and like sarah could get a set off of it and yeah. i could made an error it was just like shank into the ground shank off the end line <laughs> like she couldn't even get a touch on it yeah. i was like oh geez that was tough that was a tough one for us but it happened i mean it happens to literally everyone every now and then. i mean you'll go back and watch yeah. like the london olympics and even carrie's getting like pinged like yeah. that and it's like all right well i mean that's the greatest blocker of all time yeah so, <laughs> so it was better definitely better there this year Meg had a really good tournament in Paris last year, so her did she, play with she Emily? played with Emily. Okay, um, I only remember this because we talked about it. But they they beat us. They beat Sarah and I. Okay, and then they beat Barbara and Kroll, That's but they win. never played on stadium court. Um, and she said that they lost to the Dutch girls. But Stam and Schoon. Yeah, okay. she said they were, they needed good points in that one to break pool. Okay, because that was still when they were just doing the top two teams broke, and. Um, I think they, she said, <laughs> at the same time that I was getting aced off the court, they were on the outer court <laughs> and they were up six to one. And then I think she said they lost 21 to seven or eight or something. Oh. <laughs> she, and so all four of us, cause we like, we would hang out all the time. You right. Know? So all four of us were on the bus back to the hotel and we were all just like, man, guys, <laughs> volleyball is so tough sometimes. <laughs> like, ay, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. So it was cool to be able to have, like, yeah, we lost all three games in the main draw, but it felt like we were really competing in all three games, which yeah. was really cool. And <clears throat> then to be able to take that and roll it into World Champs a week later was pretty fun. Yeah, because to beat uh, Shin Yisha and Chen Shu, that's a really good team. Yeah, that was a really fun match. Yeah. I don't know. We were just, it, like, rolling yeah felt good so I don't <laughs> it really, must have yeah your match against andressa and victoria i was texting i was like live texting with mark oh, throughout yeah. 
I was like, this is crazy because I forget which way it went. Like they were up big in the first and you guys yeah. stole it. And yes. then you guys were up pretty big in the second. And then they, and had then they kind of stole it. Or no, they must have won the first because they had match point in the second. Okay. But we were up big in the second. Okay. And they won. And so I watched that game back when we were flying home. Yeah. And like playing it, you're, you're like, we've got this. I'm in control, you know? Yeah. Watching it back, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what's going on? Like we were down, I think we were down 18 to 13 at one, in the first yeah. set maybe, like, and almost stole it. It was just like, I don't remember it being that big. I just remember it being like one point at a time. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, it was a wild ride. It yeah. was up and down. And we, we were up big in the second set and then they slowly started to crawl their way back. Yeah. And Something happened where like we maybe gave up a couple points in the row and to the point where they got an ace and then they had match point. And I remember I've told Meg this. I remember thinking like this was a really fun match. So whether we win the set or lose the match, like yeah. this has just been really fun. But yeah. obviously I was like, I want I want to win. You yeah. know, we're gonna make do the right thing so that we can win this set and take it at three, which we did, which was good. But I could not fall asleep after that. Because <laughs> this is a pretty late match and I think I was up till I don't even. I uh, I love playing night matches, but I cannot. Yeah. It like it takes me till like five in the morning. It was like a couple hours that I was trying to wind down, and it was just so much adrenaline that I was yeah. Like, oh my god. Do you are you, do you uh like drink coffee or caffeine yeah. or anything before you play? <laughs> That's why. And Betsy was so funny because they played a bunch of night matches, and we I'd be commentating, mm-hmm. and so like she'd be like crushing a Celsius or something. She's like, you just. Do what you gotta do. Yeah, like I gotta, <laughs> I gotta perform well for the match. And if you're playing a one night match, then hopefully, you yeah, can sleep in the next day, sort of thing. So that's what we did. But it was crazy, and they, and we were at the altitude, you know, so it was just so even tough, harder. Yeah. And Meg said at one point she was like, "I'm getting served every ball, and that girl's getting served every ball, and I know that I'm less tired than she is because yeah. she just like, they, I think they ran out of steam a little bit at the end. Yeah. But. Well, they spend a lot of energy yelling at each other, too. Yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't notice when we were playing, because whatever we get the point, Meg and I would go back and talk about stuff or what we were right. going to do next or celebrate with each other. But then watching it back, I was like, oh. Yeah. Because sometimes, I happy. mean, like uh, like Barbara and Carol, like when they get kind of feisty, mm-hmm. it'll fire them up. Yeah. And it's just like when teams are big on energy, it's like anything good or like really good or really bad that happens, yeah. it can... It can go one of two ways. Yeah, it can go really <laughs> good. You're really good or, or really bad. You hope bad. it goes really bad if it's someone you're playing against. Yeah. But, yeah. So that was a fun match for sure. And then you guys are like the exact opposite, just so even keeled and steady. Especially Meg. I mean, she's like the coolest person. Yeah. Because when we – I was chatting with Emily about her before um, they started playing, mm-hmm. and she just kept saying, easy. Like, yeah. Everything with Meg is just so easy. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, it's just, it was really, which I had a college coach describe me once as a sponge, as like, I just kind of take on the energy of my partner and having Meg just be super, super positive, but super even keeled is really like, that's how I want to play. And that's Mm -hmm. where I want to be. So, um, it was, I don't know. It was just nice where I feel like we were both balancing each other well. So that's good. Yeah. Do you think that it is a, a strength or weakness that you take on the energy of your partner it's a really good question i don't know because because <laughs> i think i i'm somewhat similar mm-hmm. and i think with the right person like with meg yeah it's great because like that is sort of has an exponential component mm-hmm. to it where then you become better and better yeah. but then if like if something if there's like negative energy and then you start to like take too much of that in yeah it can like kind of sap you yeah so that's i mean I think there's times when it's good and other times when it's like I have need to try harder to like be who I am. Mm -hmm. But for a long time, I don't think I knew who I was as a competitor and what that was. Yeah. And so it was like just easier almost to kind of act how my partner was acting and follow their lead. But I feel like I'm figuring out better now. This is who I am. And then in moments when I want to be something for a partner than Mm -hmm. I can. So yeah, that's a hard thing. To figure out, yeah, it's. I think that's a sign of a, of maturity as an athlete to figure out what type of competitor you are. Yeah, because you have so many. Like you have the the Kobe's and the Jordans mm-hmm. who just like were fueled by just rage yeah. and anger. 
and, that's and like not that me. huge chip on your shoulder. <laughs> right. I feel like we've all like experimented with different yeah. types. Like I was like, ooh, that doesn't feel very good. In I don't high school, do that. it was always like everyone called me Tree in high school, and so like we want angry Tree. Like we, we want you to get <laughs> pissed off and angry because that's when you play well. And like yeah. that worked for a little bit, but not long term. Yeah. And then in college, I played with Nicolette. And she is so fiery and loud. Yeah. And I go back and watch those games and I'm like, man, I kind of miss that sometimes, you know, because <laughs> I feel like I, we yeah. were just like veins popping out of the necks and foreheads and yeah. the cheering was so aggressive, <laughs> Yeah, which is fun sometimes, but just not sustainable for yeah. me anymore. And Nicolette had like the double factor of it would just drive opponents crazy oh, yeah. too. They'd be like, Can I you think just pipe it down? I think a big reason why she did it. I think so too. Yeah. She was really smart. Yeah. And it was like, because it was funny because it was all positive energy, mm -hmm. but loud enough where she was like, I'm getting on their nerves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, I know, it's working. <laughs> when her and Fallon played together, I was like, oh man. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> oh, that's fun. But... So you're, you're like super mode is like light and happy. I think so. Yeah. Which... I think for me, I love Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. I think he is the prime example where he's like, Happy, go lucky, competitive, but also he has like a like sort of like a cocky swagger. Yeah, and like that's sort of like what I try to go for. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and like would love to go through. I'm trying to, yeah, still find because everyone wants to be the Kobe and the like, where it's just like you're on the court and no one wants to mess with you, sort of thing. Yeah, and so I want to be part of that, but also at the same time, like I play volleyball because it's fun. Like, I love to have fun playing volleyball yeah. and, like, enjoy being out there. And when I make a mistake, being able to kind of just laugh it, not laugh it off, like, I'm not taking it seriously, but be able to laugh it off and forget it and move on to the next point, I think yeah. it's big for me. And so figuring out how to do that and still be serious and decide when to turn it on and how to turn it on and all that is... Yeah. Yeah. And, like, berating yourself over it in the moment doesn't do any good. No. And like so that's what practice is for. Yeah. I mean, not really even practice sometimes, but. But you can nitpick in practice. Yeah. Where if you're like yelling at yourself at 1818 in, in the second match. set, like it's not. Yeah. Because then your partner is like, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> what do we do? At that point, all you can do is focus on the next point. So. Right. So that's, that's cool that you're sort of finding that because it took yeah. me a long time to sort of figure out when I'm at my competitive best. And when I did, I was like, oh, why am I trying to force. Yeah. It's like Kobe. Black, right. black mamba yeah. thing I'm like everyone can kind of have their own personality unique to them so yeah mine is still a work in progress for sure but yeah <laughs> trying to figure it out as we go do you do you read any like uh sports psych books or anything i want to and i always get through a couple chapters and yeah. then i put them down <laughs> but i have a lot of time coming up like over the holidays a lot of flights that yeah. i'm taking so if you no have kidding. any any good ones that you might recommend the Adam best, so second best book I've read this year. Well, now mm -hmm. it's, it got knocked down to number three because I read the new Elon Musk biography. Oh. Holy cow. Good. It's so good. Because it, it was like a 21 hour audio book. First oh, wow. audio book I've ever listened to, yeah. but I had 32 hours of drive time to Colorado. Yeah. So it was audio book yeah. time. <laughs> um, but it's, Zana recommended it. Uh, it's called The Confident Mind. Okay. And I, heard of that. I gave it, I've given away like six copies this yeah. year. Because it, it's so good. Okay. And I, th good. I think you'd really enjoy it because it's not... I don't know if you've read anything by Tim Grover. No, He's, but I know, the, I know the name. He trained Jordan and Kobe. Okay. Um, And he's all about like finding your dark side and just yeah. like outworking everyone and yeah. pretty much like having zero balance outside of like killing people on the court. <laughs> I was like, all right, well, there's, that's one way to <laughs> yeah. do it. Yeah, for sure. Um, This is kind of not the other side of it but it's, it's a different perspective yeah and i i enjoyed it because he the guy who wrote it uh he's a psychologist and he works with uh the army cadets at oh, west point mm -hmm. and also with all their sports teams nice so i i would recommend the confident mind so yeah so, okay yeah i'll text oh, it to okay. you as well yeah perfect yeah I've read, it's I'll like read every it. time people come over our house and you know our bookcase yeah i have a couple of your books yeah so right people now. just like <laughs> rate it all the time and so yeah. i'm like oh i want Damn it! I yeah, already gave this one away. Okay, I'll get a new one. And you can. Yeah, <laughs> I have I have two of yours right now, and I'm I haven't read them yet. One I think I might bring you to the Philippines, time. and then yeah. I'll bring them back. <clears throat> you got time. Okay, cool. Thanks. When's your last? When's the last time you played in Orsega? Travis, I've never played in Orsega. Wow. I know, and I was like, "Am I going to go my whole career never playing in Orsega?" You can't. That's and not here a career. Here we are. Yeah, so. you can't. <laughs> <laughs> playing in Orsega. How was the qualifier? I know I know who played on the guy's side, but I didn't get the women's bracket. 
Uh, it was good. There are a lot of good teams playing. Um, we played Tony and Haley in the <clears throat> final. Okay. Uh, I can't, and then we played Kim and Tegan in the semifinal. Okay. And Madison Shields and Avery Papinga in the in the first round. Okay. So there were like a lot of good teams, teams playing. Uh, Molly Turner and Abby Van Winkle played. Okay. Uh, Kylie DeBerg and Elena Chacon. That's a good team. Played. There were a couple other like there were twelve good teams playing. Okay. So. No Kelly and Sarah. No, they were supposed to play. They were on the bracket when they released the bracket. Okay. And then like a couple days later, they released a new bracket and they weren't on it. Okay. Because I remember I was talking to Savvy and she said that she was supposed to play them in the second round. Savvy played too. Yeah. And then so I didn't know. Because when I saw that you won, I was like, damn, if she won, she'd probably beat Kelly and Sarah in the final. That's a a good win. They ended up dropping out. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So they did not play. Um, But it was still a good, like good day. I haven't played matches, but like, because it was a match, an hour off, a match. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done that in so long. I was ready for bed. That's my favorite way to play. I would so much rather on off on off than on sit two and a half hours because then you yeah. get ice cold. Because when it's on yeah. off on off, you just take a, the first set of the next match, yeah. drink water, eat some food, and then you start moving around again. The second set, yeah. then you just go again. Like you don't get too cold. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, because we weren't totally cold. Like. By then, I don't even think we really warmed up for the last match. Yeah, and you just like nice. you hit a ball and yeah, you're good. And you're like, okay, we're ready. Let's just get it started. Yeah. So yeah, I just by the end of the day, I was tired. I was like, I bet. <laughs> I'm it's like the best kind bed. of tired yeah. too. It's yeah. like the most, especially when you win. You're mm-hmm. just so satisfied, and you're like, I deserve this ice cream and yeah. some sleep. I got ice cream. Oh, Mark and I went. We got a treat. Get it? We definitely got ice cream. So. <laughs> yeah i still miss our nymegan days i know ice cream dates with tim andy asked me the other day because i think they're going from world tour finals maybe having a layover in europe somewhere like flying up to europe and then to the dominican okay um he was like where's your favorite european city you've ever been and i told him that one nymegan yeah. really yeah because That's i was your like favorite. it was so fun i think it was just the people we were there with yeah like, it was cool the city was cool it wasn't super super touristy and i was like we're in the netherlands everyone's tall and everyone's riding bikes <laughs> i love that <laughs> It was getting there was so funny because I was you were coming from Cherivia too. Yeah. You and Molly won. That was a great trip for you. Great Silver trip. medal with Molly. Still one of my favorite ones. Winning gold with D. Yeah. But I was coming with uh Jake McNeil and Will oh, Hoey. Yeah, that's right. And, and we did you go to Amsterdam for we days? stopped in Amsterdam yeah. for two days. Yeah. And then I went and it was just awful. With <laughs> poor Tim. I was like, Tim, I'm really sorry. sorry. I spent two days in Amsterdam. <laughs> just had to see the city while we were there you know? had to do some exploring yeah uh, i know i don't think it, we didn't i flew through amsterdam but didn't see the city at all okay I like, amsterdam I is really cool like I would it's love to go back. it's uh worthy of the hype yeah it's crazy because well it's really funny because i'd never left the country until 2018 mm-hmm. when beach volleyball in norseca in martinique love that and then like since then i think i've played in 20 different countries which is so cool and it was really weird for me this year and it, it's weird that it was weird to me that, that mexico is the only time i left the country this year was it really yeah because with oh. a rob we played like 12 or 14 yeah. events overseas and so i just got Everywhere. so used to just like popping yeah. back and forth like this is normal mm-hmm. but now I look back and like that's really not a normal yeah. thing to do <laughs> that's, man. it's not normal <laughs> yeah. this was more of a normal year probably yeah this like, yeah just like 12 days normal. in mexico and yeah it was a long time in mexico <laughs> it was a long time in mexico it felt a bit like Groundhog's Day by the end of it. Yeah. Not in a bad way, but... Yeah. It was... Uh, I think my days were so full. Yeah. Cause like, oh, my gosh. I can only imagine. Because you only played like a match a day, match if every that, other day type thing. Yeah. But me and Frito were just... I was either commentating three to five matches a day and then like watching a bunch of different stuff and getting stuff with Frito. Yeah. It was... I love that stuff. I missed it. Yeah. Because that's the way it used to be. Like when I, if I would cover Pac-12 football, mm-hmm. it's like eighty-hour weeks, but then you take like three months off, pretty much. Yeah, you have a break. It's but like, like yeah, you kind of miss those weeks where you're just like grinding, like writing mm-hmm. four stories a day. And... Yeah, <laughs> miss that. Yeah, yeah. We were like the opposite, where we had nothing to do all day. Yeah, <laughs> we'd have one match at nine p.m. So we'd wake up at eight and be like, "What do we do now? What? Yeah, <laughs> like where? Are we? Did you guys? Did you go anywhere? Like, did you visit anywhere? No, because we were. We were staying at a resort, so our hotel was actually really nice. Okay. And they had a pool. Well, they were indoor pools, so they were pretty hot. But a golf course, like basketball courts, tennis courts. Okay. They had a lot of stuff. So the hotel was nice, but it was outside of the city. So we couldn't even, like, we could take a shuttle into the city and stuff if we wanted to. But 
Um, we didn't do a ton and we were a little, we were very careful when we were eating out because of all the stories we heard of people getting sick from food everywhere. It seemed like in all three cities. Yeah. So did you end up okay? Yeah, we were fine. We had no issues, but most of the, uh, the players in Tlaxcala ended up, um, cause most of them got sick from, they think eating food at the hotel. Yeah. So they all started eating out. Oh, okay. We, our food at our hotel was pretty good. They, it was the same thing every day. Yeah. <laughs> so we had pasta and chicken and pretty much no vegetables for the whole two weeks that we <laughs> yeah. were there, week and a half, but it like, it was good. So we couldn't complain that much. Yeah. Cause I, um, I would eat at. I ended up eating at the Players Hotel for uh, breakfast every morning, and like no one was there. Really? I was like, "Am I taking a risk?" But, but you were okay. I was totally fine. That's I didn't good. have any problems. Yeah, we didn't have any problems, but I think some some other people did. Yeah, it. Um, okay. I think that's one thing that a lot of viewers don't really understand is that mm-hmm. not many people are at a hundred percent. Hardly yeah. ever. Yeah. Like you got people with stomach bugs. And you get the jet lag yeah. and like the elevation, like yeah, elevation, shoulders, ankles, knees, backs, whatever. Yeah. And that is, it's like what you're watching, like people tend to not really know what's really going yeah. on under the yeah. surface. I've heard still, like stories about people who were taking medicals to like either go throw up or like just couldn't keep any food down or like this yeah. and the other thing. And for the most part, we were pretty good. I mean, at the end of the week, our biggest complaint was like, we want something other than chicken and pasta. <laughs> so <laughs> if that's our biggest complaint, then... Then you're in pretty good shape. Yeah. How's your body holding up? Pretty good. Everything I good? Think, knock on wood. But yeah, nice. Yeah, no, pretty good. Feel strong. I did... I'm going to brag. I did six and a half pull-ups the other day, and that's, really, yeah. that's a really big deal. Neutral grip, so not like true pull-ups, but still a very What's a, what's a neutral grip? For me. Just like this... Oh, so you get so like the little a, uh, thing is coming out? Up, yeah. Okay. Pull up and it was just like your knuckles facing each other. Gotcha. Which are a little easier than true pull ups. Still, six and a half is but good. But still, I was like, I'm pretty tall. That's hard for me. So yeah. I, yeah, feeling good. It's been a long year, but the way it worked out for me, we just had good chunks of time in between tournaments and yeah. have been able to stay healthy. So I. And you're, we, you had the tournament. The qualifier was technically a tournament, but before that, was World Champs your last? Yeah. So you've had a nice little break. I was thinking about that as we're starting to get ready to go to the Philippines. I was like, man, I haven't been out of the country in over a month. <laughs> 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 Which saying that out loud sounds so dumb. Like, right. Most people leave the country once or twice a year, but it's been, yeah. I was like, man, have I really not played in an actual FIV tournament since World Champs? And I haven't. So. I'm excited to be able to play again. Yeah, and do a new place. I Philippines know. Philippines would be fun. The win-win. Is it? Cool. Uh, I remember last the first time we had you on, you would talk to your uh, your twin, mm-hmm. and she'd be like, "What is this life?" You're yeah, <laughs> like, where, where are you now? What do you mean you haven't left <laughs> well, the country in a month? Yeah, like, what are you doing? <laughs> so it's just different, and when you talk to people who aren't used to it, it's always an interesting conversation. Very. Because they're like, "What do you? What do you do?" Why yep. do you do like <laughs> you're going where? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I don't know why I pay rent. I'm never here. But... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's what we have. Uh, Miles Partain is staying with us now. Oh, nice. Because he texted me. He's like, do you know anyone who's renting a room? I was like, well, how often are you going to need it? Yeah. Like, and actually. Yeah, because, I mean, they leave for Doha on the 30th. Mm-hmm. And then they do World Tour Finals, King of the Court, oh, they're doing the Court. Oh, smart. And so I was like. Yeah. Yeah, you can just stay with us. Like you'll be weeks. here for like a week a month. Yeah, if that, you know. <laughs> don't waste, don't waste twenty one hundred bucks a month renting your own yeah. room. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and I, I was like, because we're moving right now. Well, I say we because <laughs> my roommate and her boyfriend were planning on moving in together, and I was looking for places to live by myself, mm-hmm. and I was like, it's just so like it's so expensive. Yeah, it's. It's crazy. crazy. So we and I'm just gonna move in with them too. Nice. All three of us are gonna live together because they're like you're hardly ever home. You know, it's yeah. just like you don't have to pay. Like we can split the rent accordingly. And yeah. yeah. So where are you going? Are you still in Hermosa? Yeah, it's like two blocks from where we live right now. Okay. So <laughs> I say moving, but it's not really. Yeah. Like we're just moving. A it's such a pain. Away. Like why are you moving though? If you're not moving very far, um, that place is so expensive. The place that we live is not. The three of us couldn't live there. It's not big enough for all three of us. Got it. So. Because that location's so great. Yeah, it's been so nice, and we're like only we're gonna live in between first and second on Monterey. 
So, oh, nice. So now you'll be even closer to us. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So I think it'll be good, but it's just, yeah, that place has been really good. We have, I've enjoyed living there. I bet. Yeah. We lived there for two <laughs> years. I'm like, I'll wake up and you can hear the ocean from our living room. So yeah. That's very nice. That, that's what I love about the winter is that once the waves are big, you can, we'll open up the windows and the door and you can, you can hear just them. hear it. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is perfect. Yeah. You don't even <laughs> need one of those little sound machines because you got the real things. So. Yeah. Well, with Austin, we need all, anything that'll help him sleep. We got sound machines here and there oh, and around. How does he do with sleep? D- he doesn't. No, just really. Just refuses. Man. Yeah. That's so, it's, I, that, would, I would struggle. Yeah. It's, uh, it's hard. like with, what I'm discovering with kids is that there are trade-offs. Mm-hmm. So, oh, like a lot of my friends who have great sleepers, for whatever reason, their kids are kind of temperamental throughout the day. Yeah. When he's up. He's the happiest kid in the world. Like yeah. he's giggling, he's that happy, he's playing. Me. Yeah, <laughs> that's a Katie Spieler. He's got pretty happy parents, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. Katie, she's like, could you imagine if you two made like a cranky kid? No, I can't. It just wouldn't exist. It would never happen. Yeah. Like, impossible. Yeah, but he doesn't sleep. So me and Sean Cook, we bond over that because uh, Austin is like following in Kiva's footsteps in terms of being a either? tank. Kiva's not a sleeper. Oh, man. Yeah, I think he's getting better now. Yeah. Because now that once you start eating solids. You can start sleeping through the night better. Okay. But we're not there yet. yet. It's funny because we're like trying, we're we're like shoving food at him. Yeah. The only thing (laughs) he'll eat is an apple. That's it? Because he'll just like take a little bite. So he can eat solid food. He just doesn't want it? He can. I think he could if he really wanted to. Okay. But he'll like, he'll just use a carrot as like a teether toy basically. (laughs) Nice. And then, but it, you put an apple in front of him, and he'll just like be able to get some a little bit of apple juice out, and he's yeah. just like, "Whoa, Love this it. is awesome!" Oh, <laughs> but he's gonna be strong. He's like oh yeah, big already, big boy. Love that. Yeah, him and Kiva. I was like, "All right, you guys, volleyball's not for you. Offensive line." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> keep getting strong. Start now. <laughs> exactly. Make some money, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Or are you still are you still tutoring or anything? Not really. <clears throat> yeah, I just kind of been focusing on volleyball for the past year, but. Might have to reevaluate that in yeah. the spring. We'll see. We'll see what the schedule looks like. Yeah, it's like interesting and yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. What do you think of the new? It was so funny because I was off the grid for a full week almost. Yeah. And I get back and like in the middle of the time that I was in Colorado, I guess the AVP announced the like the league thing. All I saw was one small press release. Yeah, and that's I all. Even, I haven't even talked to anyone. Yeah, me I neither. Like, I, I emailed the new uh, COO today, see yeah, if he wants to come on. I, um, I but everyone's like, Have you, "Are you seeing this is the craziest thing?" I had like a hundred messages when I got back on service. No was way. like, I, you know, way more than I do. Where like, do you I even begin where... to sort through that when you get back on service? And you have like over a hundred messages. I'm just like, it's well, it was, it was easy because it was all the same. It yeah. was like, dude, are you seeing this? Like, this is crazy. What is this? Yeah. Should I even bother practicing? I'm like, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I no couldn't idea. Tell you. So I'm really curious to see how that all plays out. Yeah. And in theory, it kind of sounds like a good idea, but it's just curious to see how the grassroots program, you know, if they're going to do a league and it sounds like there's going to be eight teams per yeah. league or something. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I don't really know. Yeah. I'm interested. Yeah. It's It'll be interesting regardless if it goes well or bad. And, yeah. like, at some point, a change was needed. Yeah. Because the AVP can't keep losing millions and millions of dollars I every know. year. Like, it like that doesn't work for anyone. Yeah. So. So. I'm well, hopeful, but we'll see how it goes. I'm just curious what the whole year is going to be like next year, you know? It's, yeah. Because we're in a different spot. We're not going to the Olympics, but still trying to train at the highest level. Mm-hmm. So. Are you allowed to train at USC with Meg? I don't know. Because you went there? Like, do they have alumni exceptions? I That's a really good question because we talked about it a little bit um, in, like when we first were talking about trying to figure out schedules because we've yeah. been practicing 7 to 9 a.m. because she has <sighs> class at 10 or like practice and stuff. <laughs> Molly so. texted me. She's like, do you want to practice with Teresa and Meg at 7? I was like... Let me tell I you. Sent her, I sent her a <laughs> gif from uh, Austin Powers like, how about no? Yeah, just definitely not at 7 a.m. But before daylight savings, it was Ooh. so cold. Yeah. It was terrible. I remember seeing you get out there with Chris. It was like a one-on-one blocking work. I was like, are your fingers going to just snap off? I couldn't off? feel my toes that day. I, I, <laughs> I was like, Chris, why are we going at 7? <laughs> like, because he had something else, so we okay. had to. Well, he's up at Pepperdine, right? Yeah. Okay. And it was maybe that, or maybe he was helping out with the USA group or something that we like had to go early because okay. I couldn't go later in the afternoon or he couldn't. And I was like, never again. 
I started wearing my Uggs. Day. <laughs> I was like, it's so cold. But um, yeah, so anyway, when we were trying to figure out what times Meg could actually practice, I was threw it out there. Where I was like, I can come to SC. My schedule is a lot more flexible than her schedule. But I think we would have had, there would have been liability issues maybe for okay. them. Unless we named like Gustavo or Dane, like one of their coaches as our team coach. Okay. Which like we couldn't really do, I don't think. So yeah, I will throw it. I mean, it's worth considering. Yeah. So my schedule is pretty flexible. Yeah. And I just pretty much practice and lift and <laughs> the usual. Yeah. Sometimes make cookies. Like, just... <laughs> Got to figure that out. Got to figure that out. Yeah. This whole last month that I've been home, I'm like, my, my life is like, what am I, what am I do all day? Like I have nothing yeah. to do. Whereas before when you're, you're home for a week and then gone and then home for a week and a half and then gone for three, it's just feels like your time at home is so much more like you're catching up on errands yeah, and trying precious. to see some friends and like there, it's just felt so much busier. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I've actually had three or four or five, however many weeks at home, yeah, I'm almost bored. It's like, what do I do here? <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> we gotta get on the road again. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's really funny because when you're on the road, you're like, oh, I can't wait to be home. And then yeah. you're home, you're like, what yeah. do we do? Like this weekend was the first free weekend in a long time that I was home and Mark was also home. And okay. we were just like, what do we do all weekend? Yeah. Like we have a free, should we make plans? Should we not make plans? <laughs> like, I don't know. What do we do? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was fun. Do you have, well, I guess the schedule's not out. I mean, internally, the international one is, but mm. do you, is, I mean, it's going to be hard for Meg to travel I in think spring. So. Yeah. And I, we haven't really talked about it yet. Okay. So that's like probably a conversation because, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've been talking to my dad about it. Like, what, how do I yeah. set up practices or p- what tournaments to play and that sort of thing? Yeah. It's all kind of up. So you're there. just finishing the year out and then whatever next you'll just kind of figure out next year as it yeah, comes i think so that's the plan for right now that's fun though it's yeah. fun to have like a, a definitive finish to how this year is going to go yeah and then kind of an open book for what next year might yeah. look like especially because well, internationally there's not gonna be any changes because you can't change anything with right. paris but um but like, ABP, cool. who knows? like something new and different and yeah something to compete in and i don't know i think it'll be i'm excited like i know we're not going to the olympics but at the end of this year i finally found my like I'm, this sounds lame but like passion for mm-hmm. the game again where it's like i like to travel and compete internationally because yeah i, I want to be one of the best players in the world so whether i'm going to the olympics or not it's still really cool to be able to go and play in those elite 16s or the challenge events against the other top teams in the world and yeah. see how we stack up and try to get better and it just seems more uh process oriented like i just remember why we like doing it and why it's mm-hmm. fun and so Olympics or no Olympics, like still want to be the best. Yeah. Just one tournament every four years. Like maybe, you know, the next four years, we'll see what happens. So. And Olympics or no Olympics, like it's still pretty extraordinary life. Yeah. You get to live or you're home and you're like, I make cookies and live. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty cool. You cannot complain. And it was really fun. I think this year, I think you made the jump from, like, you know, we were talking about that qualifier elite player where it's, like, mm-hmm. ceilings here, yeah. floors here. I think you made that jump where, like, your floor jumped up big time. Oh, I'm trying so hard. So I remember watching, I was commentating your bronze medal match against Zoe and Esme and Itapema. Yeah. And they just kept serving you and serving yeah. you. And, ser- and you were siding out, like, 9 out of 10. I just got and I was like, every ball. And always. I was like, I feel like everyone was still writing the scouting report from 2022 yeah. where they're like, Streaky T yeah. is going to show up at some point. She's going to shank a couple balls or like get blocked right. or make some errors. But you know? Streaky T is, is, is gone. Hopefully she's gone for good. You yeah. Know? Like really, really trying. And that my whole thing is I don't want to be a super flashy player who makes, I mean, obviously I would love to be, but I don't think I am, who makes like the really extreme, crazy, like you make highlight a couple, You make film. a couple highlight blocks. Uh, those are that. my favorite yeah. yeah but i just like want to be here like want to be very steady very consistent mm-hmm. and like consistently good and siding out and doing my job and where there's like some highs but not as many lows yeah so that was a huge compliment thank you i'm like really working on that <laughs> yeah well it was it was noticeable to me and then anybody looks at your resume from this year where you played what like four avps five oh, i you don't had, think that many we had all thirds and a seventh yeah the seventh was tough but it's not like your losses were bad yeah i don't even remember who we lost to that was just like it was new orleans and it was a tough tournament all around for a lot of different reasons yeah like what, what you were saying of how 
you know, sometimes everyone doesn't know what's going on behind the scenes. Like there yeah. was just a lot of stuff going on in that tournament, but yeah, it was, it was cool. It was a fun year and I didn't like pretty bummed that I had to miss Manhattan. Super bummed that I missed Manhattan. Yeah. Oh, I remember running into you on the green belt. Yeah. I was like, yeah. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Cause you were, yeah, you were with Austin. Uh, yeah. Ugh. Passed out. Yeah. <laughs> the one time he likes to sleep maybe. Well, he, he naps in the day pretty well, but overnight we yeah. can't take that and translate oh, it. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was just tough. Like, because it's right here and not only is it such a fun tournament to play in, but like the prize money is pretty good. Yeah. And if we're consistently taking thirds, like I don't have a ton of sponsors, so yeah, rely on prize money a lot. And so the way the timing with everything worked out, the fact that I had to miss that. And then it was kind of my decision to not, uh, well, I don't know, hard to explain, but with the deadlines yeah. and. Cause you couldn't have like, like scrambled for Hamburg really either. Maybe you could, maybe not, but I don't, yeah, that I don't was just, think so. Just it was just it tough was timing. Really, really tough timing to miss the last two, my favorite two AVPs of the year, you know? Yeah. But next year. Cause you, oh man, you didn't do Chicago either? No. Oh. I know. That was tough too, because by the time, like the sign up deadline closed, I think the day before Sarah told me that she was going to like she was going to go a different direction mm -hmm. um and at that point like if she told me 24 hours earlier i could have signed up with anyone yeah but at that point like she and i were already signed up for the tournament and like everyone else was already signed up with partners right and so it was kind of funky trying to figure out like who to play with but then silver lining was mark's best friend was getting married that weekend in rhode island so after so much back and forth and being like, I can't go to the wedding, I can't go yeah. to the wedding, I can't go to the wedding, I was like, hey, so actually, <laughs> <laughs> can I come to the wedding? <laughs> and like at that point, it was like the week of the wedding when I okay. actually decided, or the week before maybe. And so they were like, if someone who RSVP'd yes says like they can't come anymore, then sure, you'll just have to sit where they sat and like yeah. eat what they ate. And I was like, cool. So I... It, the way it worked out was it's actually a very funny story i was in rhode island for a couple of days and it was gonna, the wedding was on a sunday because it was labor day weekend and my sister was getting married the week after okay so i was just gonna like fly home before they all went to the wedding mm -hmm. and then that morning they called mark his friend called mark and was like hey someone got covid Teresa come to the wedding now and i was <laughs> like oh my gosh so he was driving me to the airport and by the time we got to the airport i canceled my flight and was like okay i'm just gonna go, i'll go home tomorrow like we'll go to the wedding so missed the chicago avp but it was really fun to be able to that's cool go to a bunch of weddings in a row yeah, so, yeah. it's wedding season wedding you're season. you're in that age range yeah i went to three in a row and my back best, to back to back yeah whoa because his friend and then Marin, my sister and then molly turner got married the week after okay molly's wedding looked beautiful it was so up in the fun. redwoods oh my gosh and it was so them and they're so in love that it was just yeah it was it was amazing yeah was when beautiful. i saw the pictures it was like this is like the most molly james the thing imaginable yeah. and then someone whoever got them to sign that it's like you're entering molly and james national that. forest he, they, oh. they built it oh really yeah and it, like painted it and it's like one of the best wedding signs i've seen yeah yeah it's yeah awesome. it was so cool and so them and it was just such a fun weekend so. yeah well it sounds like you had a lot of silver linings from yeah. a bit of an up and down of a year yeah for sure it was good good we liked it <laughs> good year <laughs> a, lot, yeah. a lot of memories you know so ultimately really good excited to compete a couple more times this mm -hmm. year and then see what happens next year yeah well where can our listeners follow you and your journey on instagram i'm on instagram at therese cannon i have and, a facebook but i never use it okay so instagram it is <laughs> and if people are looking to sponsor for you what kind of category of a sponsor honestly <clears throat> that's a really good question i haven't thought that hard about it i want to say anything like yeah. <laughs> i'll take anything you know yeah. um but although you kind of had uh who designed the apparel oh uh wore? novice clothing company got it they were based out of Albany. shoot t i meant to wear my the therese shirt? cannon shirt <laughs> i love that you have it. and i Thanks thought about it one. i love wearing it too yeah yeah it's awesome and i because i thought about it like once i got here i was like oh you dummy this would have been the <laughs> perfect time. time to wear we'll it. do this again sometime <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if you'll have me back of but. course we'll have you this is the annual therese cannon show yeah, thank you <laughs> but are you still selling merch or is that like a limited time i think that was a limited time okay. thing where they would like do a couple of releases a year so. okay yeah, and if anyone wants to sponsor me, yeah. Well, did out. Lost Traveler do your 
bikinis they for did. world champs and they were so cool and yeah. that was such a cool thing because i was like very last minute obviously there was a lot yeah. going on and josh was awesome and they designed them shipped them to us they don't do a ton of sports for us but okay i've actually been talking to them a little bit so we're talking about maybe trying to do some more um like women's apparel because i think awesome. they do a lot of men's stuff but it was fun it, that was i know we're probably trying to wrap things up but that was a really cool part of world champs was that they let people bring their own i thought that was awesome i thought it was really cool it's fun to commentate too yeah because i'm just sitting there i'm just like i was going over the power rankings every because the guys were pretty boring they yeah, just kind of took whatever off, except whatever. for the australian guys they did a great job they had the green ones right yeah they were they, like, well they it was like yellow almost. with like green it was like a green drizzle mm, oh yeah, yeah it was yeah, cool yeah, yeah. yeah but the uh Nina Brunner and Tanya who really I thought Those their were jerseys cool were too. cool. Betsy and Julia did a nice job. Yeah. And uh Tina and Anastasia. Yeah, were cool. we liked I liked those. Yeah. But it was just fun to wear something that you were proud of and not like a company that's supporting you and yeah. something unique and different where everyone's mm-hmm. not looking the same. So that was a really cool part. Yeah. And yeah, they did they did do our jerseys and yeah, hopefully work with them in the future. Awesome. And yeah. that's Lost Traveler, if anybody wants to yeah, yeah, look, look them into up. them. <laughs> well t always fun hanging out with you always fun to see your smile happiest person in the thank world you. Oh, thanks. good luck in the philippines and thanks. good luck on your first norseka adventure thank you i can't wait <laughs> it's uh be ready for some adversity but it's welcome it's yeah, good adversity I'm always good adversity. it's good for the stories yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you bye t